Hello, my friends. It's episode 105. I've got some tidying up to do. I just hope that this isn't like... The game dying with a whimper rather than a bang. 14 rounds left to go, and I'm, I'm not certain that anything will truly change in that time. Yeah, I'll probably be able to, uh, assuming that there's no defenders in Sitard, I'll be able to just link up this to this, and maybe link this. But we know there's almost nothing here anyway. Um, oh well, whatever. in this area are basically secure. March mode for these units is reasonable now. These two blockers are coming to just fill in these. I'm, you know, I'm making, I'm making all the moves here. That makes sense to make. really more as like a demonstration of um, what you should do if the game was going to be going on for many many more turns Um, but I don't think that uh, these this wall is going to be attacked, basically. Not in any real capacity that's going to be able to do anything. security team So here I am, just marching the conger line to glory. Just turn it 
jerk off. Pink is now rolling into position. There's just, there is no easy way to move all this stuff. You've just got to do it. Auto move is in the game, but it's such a blunt tool. It's only useful for moving something across the map. For like, millions of turns. In fact, where auto move would be useful Although it is kind of risky. It's for something like this where I want this whole team to move up. That will better enable me to not forget to move those. Speaking of which, I'm just going to move these trucks here to just stop this infantry unit from squeezing past and becoming a pain behind my line. Right, where were we? At least doing this on a uh, on a major road is not too painful. At least once they're on the major road and they're on, they're in move mode on the major road, they will be uh, hauling ass at great speed. Artillery here. Best to spread those around for defending this position. That's the perfect place for that to live. Forgot that yellow actually comes with quite a lot of artillery. I think leaving one artillery behind is fine. Let's set the other one on a journey. <laughs> I can go this way, I can go this way, but I can't go this way because the traffic is so bad. Officially stuck.
genuine best I can do is one tile. Okay, this is Team Blue. Which has a lot of uh, anti-tank, which is nice. Setting up blue in position with pink on the other side. slowly becoming complete. Even with these small units passing through here, the level of traffic is enormous. Pioneers, obviously, a very powerful team. Look at this, you can just spend ten minutes just moving units north. As the conga line of death continues to move up. Traffic jam lives. Oh, some of the units in this tile can get past it. Okay, it looks like the blockage is actually shrinking now. It was just too many units in the same tile. Obviously before I did not have march mode on because I wasn't secure uh, and just the last thing you want is to accidentally bump into an enemy while on march mode. You can see the uh, amount of traffic.
building on the road. Less fuel to move in larch mode as well, I think. So units that are low on fuel get a little bit of a boost. Okay. So the yellow wall is nearly done. Pink wall is building here. Blue wall is starting to move into position. This is all cliff, so uh, enemy attack here is unlikely. I'll still fill in the gaps though. And Team Yellow was supposed to be the unit making a wall here. And that will be most of my line infantry. Actually, uh. Actually, I uh, just used. Here we are at the front line. A giant conga line of units pushes forward. I'm going to move this here to help defend this corner. Nice. Just holding this position until Team Yellow can get into position to hold it. I don't want to trim all the good stuff out of my defenders, obviously, because it's just like... That's a great idea until it isn't. The heavy rain is making uh, attacking with anything difficult. Once again, I could drop artillery on these guys, but the amount of recon I have is low, and it's low because of the rain. Okay, let's move one infantry unit here to guard the back.
Elite infantry versus line infantry. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That was actually a wash. Once again, it's probably the rain that's causing the issues here. And there's genuinely nothing I can do about that. So it might be a little bit disappointing that I'm not breaking through here, but obviously here I am just moving stuff. Uh, of course, as the defensive lines get formed, the less and less stuff that's drawing supplies, that's drawing fuel, um, leaving more supplies and fuel for everybody else. It's kind of funny, really. This just goes to show you should just be content with a winning position and not try and push your luck for a super mega ultimate winning position. Because if I had gone on the offensive with these, I probably would have gotten to about here or here before the AI decided to play like four regiment cards and summon in like 40,000 troops into one spot. And considering that they summoned like 40,000 troops, I have been kicking them down. But I would have gotten surrounded and destroyed. It's that simple. So the wall continues to close. Now here, look, it, this will be a good example. 1% artillery saturation for just using one artillery unit. That's 42 guns. So the rain is cutting artillery fire in half. Okay, I got one Churchill. I'll honestly, I'll take it. Okay, I got another Churchill. 28. How many Churchills are there? 45. 59. 60. 9. 63. There was 65. Now there's 63. That is... This is a terrifying army. But it can't get up here. Not easily. And it can't get across here because there's a river. So it can't go this way full stop. If it moves into the forest, it may be vulnerable. As vulnerable as a Churchill is. Which is not very, I would just like to say. Of all the tanks you don't want to uh, encounter as an infantryman. Owing to its tediously thick armor. Oh wow, that's amazing. Rescue this unit. And 
in fact I can probably like re would you look at that it's almost a perfect fit I can uh, redo the integrity of the unit There's probably not a lot of reason to fire my artillery right now. The rain... is going to make it very difficult to do any real damage. I've only got 49 recon on this despite the fact that it's in the open next to a ton of units on the high ground. I think the rain is cutting cutting reconnaissance values in half. So I can't even see the enemy to consider whether I am encircling them or not. You know what, this Churchill is like in such a vulnerable position, I think I can get it. Oh man, look at the infantry oversaturation. They got caught in the swamp with nowhere to go, and they just decided to pack it in. That's really bad. Oh! <laughs> this didn't go as well, but damn. You gotta be careful, man. If you need to retreat, and you don't have the AP to retreat, and you do get some like bonus AP usually to retreat with, but if the, if you got nowhere to go, especially if you're in a bad terrain tile, man, you can just end up in a dumpster. Man, I wish we captured those units. I would love to have had those Churchills. Look at this traffic. There's even traffic on the main road, it's so bad. Moving my forces is uh, proving to be a nightmare. Okay, let's see what the allies do. You know, one thing that I thought about there was like, <clears throat> it surprises me that you don't get those as captures. If that infantry had gotten a load of Churchill tank drivers to surrender, you you bet they wouldn't just leave those tanks there. They would they would take them and they would use them. One paratrooper regiment, man. Such value.
Oof. They attacked and they got wrecked. It was not even close. That's probably the right move to put that tank there. To block me from cutting off the attackers. Nevertheless, I still hold a relatively strong position. There's definitely some heavy artillery down there in the corner. It's ripping chunks out of me every turn. That is one big stack of units. Oof, that was a bad attack by them. Oh, I just took another fat artillery hit. Huge losses both sides there. Okay, I don't think anything too impactful happened. It's night time. Enforcement card. I don't think artillery is affected by night. What is affected by night is recon stat. What I might be able to do is just add some recon cards. 44, still not great. No, I'll leave it. I'll let the artillery rest. got some breaches here but there's not a huge amount I can do about them right at the moment except just block here make sure that they can't get through I took a, a unit here, got killed because it couldn't retreat. This br The bridge was blown. It was not a... Uh...
Um, it was not a one-sided battle. Let's put it that way. Um... I guess I'll start reinforcing this area. Uh, I got a lot of units here, actually. Let's put this here and just make make this a complete lock-in for safety. These units have not moved for for a long time, so they're not tired. And they can be moved at night. So I got a I got a breach here. It's not too bad. This is a cliff that kind of holds the enemy in, more or less. At the start of the next day, I should be able to start putting the hurt on it. Otherwise, it's probably best to just leave my units. Leave them alone, let them rest, and keep them strong. This usually means that enemies have been spotted. But I am supplied here, so it's a bit weird. Okay, what we can do at night time is move yellow units into defensive positions and pink units. After all, once they're in position, they won't be moving anymore, so... You know what, I'll just change the HQ of this. It's a tiny unit anyway. These units are going to get tired from being shuffled around at night, but who cares? In fact, I am going to play some trucks here.
We'll pick up this artillery and move it to where it needs to be, and then I'll use the trucks for other tasks. So, you know, once again, it doesn't matter too much that I'm moving these pink units around because once they've settled in their defensive positions, they won't be moving anymore. They'll be finished. Just on the off chance that an attack commences, they'll be used. But at the moment, a lot of the conga line is still here, so... That is not necessarily a problem. Once they're, once they're in position, they're done. Their war is over. They're just gonna sit there, unless an enemy counter-offensive comes. You have to accept that any unit that you move at night is going to be tired and unusable for a long time, unless it's fresh, unless it's like literally just been bought. That's why it's funny to me to see all these attacks and movement at night. Even if the attack is a wash, what they are doing is tiring their units. They got the artillery firing at night. And yeah, th this is hurting for sure. It's hurting me, it's hurting them. But it's really hurting them in the long run. Because they just they're draining the the uh the vigor of these units. Now they deployed them with cards in my face. So they came into the battle with a hundred vigor. Ready to fight. But it's been... I want to say six to eight turns. Since they were summoned out of nowhere. And that is enough time. For them to start hurting. To start, to start having energy trouble. Let's see what the weather is. Light rain. I'm actually taking some losses now. Nothing too serious. I'm no longer gaining VP for good loss ratio either, it's just kind of hovering at 39. They are. The AI is, is getting some kills. Pass the officers, please. Forcing Team Yellow here right now because of the uh, the amount of attackers. Actually, you know what? The unit that was here, it didn't die. It retreated onto the hill. It's actually not in a, uh, not in a terrible way. Right, let's start at the bottom and work our way up. Speaking of which...
Oh, that was horrible. <laughs> the weather, light rain apparently is too much for recon aircraft. I want as many recon points as I can get. Right. This is where we put the boot in. First, let's assess. Wow, minus 59 over stack. Yikes. That's um, 69 recon light forest. 71, and that's an open field. There's no overstack in that tile. And this one is also a field. And there's a light overstack in that tile. There's a massive overstack in this tile. So, this is asking for as much artillery as I can throw at it. It's going to be like three turns before those tigers are actually rested enough to get back into the fight. Okay, I'm going to say that that's it for now. But uh, we are going to bomb these guys and damage them as much as possible. And these positions look weak. These, these two are caught in a pincer. That's a flat, open tile. And I can probably run a few recon cards here as well. So this was 52. I'll have a look at the difference now. So I run two recon cards. Now it's uh, 69. So that's a huge improvement. The question is, do you want to attack and then artillery, or artillery and then attack? Artillery and then at attack is the more defensive move. Uh, it reduces the casualties you'll take, because the enemy is damaged before you fight them. But attacking and then artillery massively improves recon, which means that the artillery is going to get way more kills. That's an interesting consideration to have. I'm just going to park this truck here in case these units try to go this way. Just so that I'm aware of them. No other reason. This is in a three points around as well. I might be able to uh, bash him out of existence. Okay, that's it for now. This defensive front is quite interesting. We definitely have uh, artillery ripping chunks out of each other. I don't know where their artillery is. It's probably back here somewhere. It's on my it's on my case every turn. So hopefully it gets tired and runs out of ammo soon. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time.